So if we could get a round of applause for both the junior college and the senior master. And there's a man in this room that only comes to the stage when people are clapping, and that's our mayor, Garrett Marsh. Welcome. Thank you, Ruben, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, see all of you here today. And uh, this is, uh, as uh, Mayor Modesto, it's, uh, this is my first time to actually have been on stage for this event. I've been in the audience many times. Um, this is the 20th annual Martin Luther King Jr. commemorative event. And each year, the City of Modesto's Parks and Recreation Neighborhoods Department has been a co-sponsor. There are a whole list of sponsors. They're on the back of your program. And, and please take a look at those and recognize those who have helped make this evening possible. Um, it, it's really an honor to have Diane Nash as our speaker tonight. Uh, her, her history of the civil rights movement is, is memorable. And, uh, and she will join a long list of other great speakers that we've had with us. Our previous speakers include civil rights leader and U.S. Congressman John Lewis, comedian and activist Dick Gregory, civil rights leader Reverend Joseph Lowry, Dr. King's daughter Yolanda King, actors and activists including Edward James Olmos, Danny Glover, and Mike Farrell, astronaut Mae Jameson, football coach Herman Boone, founder of the M.K. Gandhi Institute for Nonviolence, Arun Gandhi, former California State Assembly Speaker of the House and San Francisco Mayor, Willie Brown, and clean energy policy advisor and activist, Van Jones. Uh, quite a list of distinguished speakers and uh, it's, it's my pleasure to know that Diane Nash will be joining that group. Um, uh, it'll be a real joy to have her join us and speak to us this evening. So, as your mayor, I'd really like to say thank you and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, at this point, we would like to uh, welcome the Reverend James Anderson to the stand to present the Martin Luther King Jr. Award. And as he's coming up, I, uh, as he's coming up, there he is. I want to mention that we have several other recipients. Um, uh, the first recipient of this of this award was the Reverend James Anderson and the Christian Love Baptist Church. Tommy Muhammad is here. John Mataka, John X Mataka is here. And the other recipients have been the West Modesto King Kennedy Neighborhood Collaborative, uh, Cleopatra Morbell, Carol Collins, and Barbara Anderson Jordan and the bridge. So round of applause for all the pastors. There would be only one other person that I'd be more excited to introduce tonight other than my good friend Wayne Bridegroom, that would be the President of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, say that sincerely because he has been a friend to me and to the community. And so my assignment tonight is to uh, uh, read something. I will read it because I don't want to leave anything out. He has done so much and has such a great impact upon the community of Modesto. And my paper says, for 40 years, Pastor Wayne, as many people appreciatively call him, has been working in West Modesto to bring people together to enhance the common good. Homer Mejia, Executive Director of Congregations Building Community, says of him, he shows up, he's there. People know he'll stand for them, King Kennedy Collaborative uh, Executive Director Carol Collins echoes this same esteem. He doesn't change his commitment to the community. He's a caring and 
passionate person who gives himself. And he's that way all the time. And I can say amen to that. For his long time dedication and his skill and leadership in bringing different uh, groups together to create a most just and vibrant community, the local Martin Luther King Jr. Commemoration Program presents its 2014 MLK Legacy Award to the pastors of Central Baptist Church, Pastor Wayne Bridegroom. The legacy, yes. You know, I'm reading this, you know, because sometimes you have to make up stuff. <laughs> In this case, you don't have to make up stuff. The Legacy Award uh, honors individuals or a group of their preserving work, preserving work on behalf of often underdeserved people in our community. The commitment of those honored reflects Dr. King's vision of building the beloved, beloved community. As West Modesto in 1980s became more, came home to increasing numbers of Southeast Asian and Latinos, Pastor Wayne's church welcomed them and in the home of their ethnic congregation. Laotians, Hmongs, Cambodians, Hispanic. He also brought two other West Modesto churches and five Anglo churches from across town to work together, building connections and bonds of leadership, friendship within the community through activities like block parties, tutoring at Marshall and Mark Twain, and sports leagues for youth. With help from Bob Small, Pastor Wayne founded Harvest of Hope that helped needy families and later the local weed and seed program, the later becoming the only such effort in the nation to bring city and county government together in one project. For 20 years, he's worked with the King Kennedy Collaborative and Stanislaus County on projecting on projects uh, focusing on mental health and well-being issues affecting the community and improving relations between the police and the community. In the early 2000s, Pastor Wayne became a founding member of the local affiliate P PICO, California, called Congress Congregation. Congregations Building Communities, CBC, that targets issues of low income and working class families. Among other projects for the last two years, Pastor Wayne has been of the leaders of CBC efforts to promote comprehensive immigration. Mahia sums up Pastor Wayne's commitment to building Dr. King's beloved community. <clears throat> And it states, and I quote, he doesn't just preach about justice. He's there on the ground working for it. <laughs> Pastor Wayne Bargrill, when I was told I was going to do this, I, I, see, someone told me, said, you, it's a big, heavy award. I said if it was heavier than the one I got a few years back, I'm not going to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way Bradley. There is no one on earth that you'll ever meet unless Jesus comes that has a personality and a caring for people. To my then my brother Wayne, Pastor Wayne Bradley.
Jim. We have to do something here. If you know Pastor Anderson, you know that handshakes are never good enough. <laughs> Beside the young people out here, another thing that encourages me tremendously is a memory that goes back 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, our church brought on an assistant for me uh, who had just graduated from Eastern Seminary in Philadelphia, uh, a young African-American man by the name of Harry Williams. He attended this event with me and was just utterly shocked also attended uh, the Martin Luther King celebration at, at your church, Pastor Anderson, and again was, was absolutely shocked because he grew up in northern Joysey where they drink water and, uh, <laughs> and, and had been to Martin Luther King's celebrations every year of his life and had never ever seen anyone other than African American folks at those celebrations. And when I look out here, and I see a multitude of races and peoples, I say, you go, Jesus. You've done something through Dr. King and now through us to build that beloved kingdom. get a matter up on stage, you can't leave, but uh, it, it, you know, it's really a pleasure to be up here with Jim and Wayne, uh, they're friends, and I honor and respect them, and I have a certificate from the city of Modesto, <coughs> excuse me, uh, recognizing uh, Reverend Wayne Brightfield, so, Wayne. learned to hug. <laughs> and you need to know that he has someone at home that hugs him all the time. <laughs> Beth, would you please stand? There you go. That's his beloved bride. That's his beloved bride of 44 years. Now give that a clap. Yeah. She has stood by his side in each year. She looks younger and younger. He looks older. <laughs> but we still love him as much as we love her. God bless you. To do some of the music from the days of the moon, it was a time of faith. Myself being a pastor and minister understanding that it took faith to bring us through tough times. But because there were people who believed, for us our belief began on our knees. Beginning with prayer and singing, coming together in agreement. Let's all come together on our knees.
Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Me. Oh, now me. Me. Let us all pray together on our knees.